Uh, hey guys, you better take tell that wildcat behind the wheel. Chill out. <laughs> All right. Hey, pop quiz hot shot. What segment is it? Pop quiz hot shot. All right, tell them what that is, D. Pop quiz hot shot is the top ten facts about the film that we are covering. That film being No Country for Old Men. So here are the top ten facts about No Country for Old Men. Number ten, Easter egg. In the film, Carla Jean Moss watches the crime drama 1953's Flight to Tangier on TV, a film about a mysterious plane carrying three million dollars that arrives in tent at Tangier Airport, and various interested parties try to grab the cash. See how attention to detail that movie is. Like our movie is about this, so let's have we let's not have her watching anything. Let's have her watching something that has pretty much the same plot. There you go. Number nine for reels. In the opening narration, Bell refers to the sheriffs of two other Texas counties named Jim Scarborough and Gaston Boykins. If that is a Texas asp name, who were two real Texas sheriffs at the time the film takes place in. Number eight. Parodies abound. There is no shortage of No Country parodies. SNL did There Will Be Milkshakes for Old Men, Disaster Movie, Spoof the Anton Sugar character, as well as The Simpsons in Waverly Hills, 90210. He is also spoofed in Spanish Movie, Angie Tribeca, 2019's Let's Kill Mom, and South Park, Banned in China. <laughs> And who could forget the 2008 gay porn parody, Hung Country for Young Men? Whoa. All right, that, that's what he said? All right, and with that being said, body count. 22 unfortunate souls meet their maker in No Country for Old Men, which brings to your point of duality. 11 probably went up. 11 ah, probably went down. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Number six, Zoss Floss. After blowing up the car, Shigur enters Mike Zoss Pharmacy. This is a reference to Mike Zoss Drugs, a Minneapolis pharmacy where the Coen brothers spent time in their youth. They also named their production company Mike Zoss Productions. Number five, weapon of choice. The weapon that Shiger's character uses does not actually exist. It was created for the film based on a captive bolt pistol, commonly used to stun cows before slaughtering them, which we heard Sheriff Bill say early in the film. Yes, a sound of a nail gun Damn used it. for the sound effect when he fires the pistol. Number four, keeping up with the Jones. Although top build on posters and marketing, Tommy Lee Jones had the least amount of screen time out of the three main characters. And in April of 2010, he got paid extra for that least amount of screen time when Paramount Pictures was forced to pay him a $15 million bonus when an arbitrator found that the studio's lawyers made an error when drafting Jones' deal to appear in the film. So he was paid $15 million after the fact on a film that had a total budget of $25 million. There's the answer. There's there's more answer coming too. Go for it. I was going to do number three, but I oh. saw I know I saw it. Okay. I saw the line. I'm like, you know what? No, I see hate. I'm going to let you go with it. Number three, barely composed. Composer Carter Burrell's score consists of just 16 minutes of music, and that 16 minutes of music is barely heard in the movie. Burrell also composed Fargo, The Big Lebowski, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, The Man Who Wasn't There, Intolerable Cruelty, The Lady Killers, Burn After Reading, A Serious Man, True Grit, Hail Caesar, and The Ballad of Buster Scruggs for the Coen Brothers. Uh, outside of the Coen Brothers, he also scored Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. And uh, I do have a note here that speaking of Blair Witch, give that movie a chance. It catches a whole bunch of shit online. So just watch it and enjoy it for the fun that it is and how awesome Jeffrey Donovan is. Just enjoy the ride. Stop comparing it to the first. And that was Blair the Blair Witch. Pitch Project. <laughs> Number so. three, or should I say, you want me to say it again? Because he wants you guys really to watch Blair Witch 2. But with, I'll go to yeah. my number two. So number two is where most where a good chunk of the money went. I'm, I'm going to find out with you guys right now. Number two, bloody hell. An unexpected expense for the film was a large amount of extremely expensive fake blood. No CGI here. Costing $800 per gallon. And you're complaining about gas? In the scene where Llewellyn stumbles across the aftermath of a sh shootout as many extras are laying on the ground in pools of blood, it was necessary to use a special blood blend as opposed to the traditional set blood containing sh sugar or sugar, sugar to avoid the extras being invaded by bugs and ants. Man, f that. Yeah, somebody yeah. was somebody was spending some bullshit and made a whole bunch of money off of it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a special blend, man. Look at it. Look yeah. at it. It repels ants. <laughs> Number one, 
Just don't put sugar in it. Right. <laughs> Number one, science backed. In January 2018's Business Insider, an article reported that a group of psychiatrists who studied over 400 films identifying 126 hashtag who is Robert Partridge Ding! psychopathic characters, they chose Javier Bardem's Anton Chigurh as the most clinically accurate portrayal of a psychopath. I disagree with that, but hey, you know. I guess no one saw Joaquin Phoenix. With that I mean, being, I guess no one saw. I'm gonna kill someone this Friday. I was in it. Or was I? We still don't know. And guys, that was Pop Quiz, Quiz Hot Shot. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer. <laughs>